for having me. Uh, yeah, Pete Davis from the GMB. I'm a regional officer and I, I cover Sheffield City Council and outsource services. We're probably looking at about 9,000 members and the, the issue I'm going to talk to about, I'm to talk about tonight, only affects about 30 programs. So it's not, if you look at the, at what the, you know, the, the publicity the TUC and Sheffield's Trades Council and the other trade unions and GMB are giving it, huge. We're only really talking about 32 people who work on five household workers and cycle centres in Sheffield. But it has, this dispute has everything. And it, to me, it is everything that is wrong in our work and it is wrong with our employment rights and it is wrong with the draconian legislation that we already try to exist on. These guys came into the GMB a number of years ago, about three or four, or four years ago, and they walked into our office and I was in the, the front and they said, we work on the Household Waste Recycle Centres, we're subcontracted to Veolia, none of us are in a trade union. We've heard that the GMB are the, Veolia, are the trade union of Veolia. Can you, can you help us if we join? And I said, of course, we can do it. We'll, we'll, we'll do all we can for it. I had no idea that the Household Waste Recycle Centres were part of the Veolia contract. £36 million pounds a year, it's paid by the council to Veolia to run the bins and the recycle services, and a small part of that are these four household dumpies. At the time, worth about 1.4 million to this guy, this company that called themselves South Yorkshire and North Nottinghamshire Waste Recycle Services Limited. It was actually a second hand sh uh, fridge salesman from Sharon <coughs> who just got lucky and ran the manpower contract. And how, I have no idea. The terms and conditions they brought me in, you know, I think at the time my daughter was about nine years old and she could have done a much, much more robust job of providing terms and conditions and policies and procedures for, the, for, those, for that company. So we lobbied the captain, we got them all to join, we, got, we forced a recognition agreement through, they sacked the two guys who became reps straight away, got them reinstated, we lobbied Violi where we are the main trade union, have a big recognition agreement, we lobbied the council, got the guys reinstated, forced our recognition agreement through and lobbied the council to re-tender this contract. And I'm telling you this history because it's important. We lobbied the council. The GMB used its influence and we lobbied the council. So that was more than just fighting against the employer. We used our influence in the town hall amongst those politicians and as one of the larger recognised trade unions. And we got them to sit down, form a, a joint panel with Veolia and retender this out. We wanted them to bring it back in. They wouldn't let us sit on the panel, but they said we'll retender it and we'll get a proper reputable employer if they're going to subcontract this out. And they chose an organisation called SOVA. Don't know whether you've heard then. Huge national charity. Deal with probation service and hard to reach you and getting back into employment. Massive national charity. Look, we've got this organisation, SOVA, to run the contract. They'd be fantastic. As soon as SOVA took over it, they said, oh, I don't want it. We're merging with another charity. And we didn't realise that our trading arm, which we call SOVA Recycling Services, we didn't realise that they'd bid for this contract, we don't want it. So no sooner did they want it, they didn't want it. And so the trustees ran off, and they formed a little group of trustees in Birmingham, two in Birmingham, two in London, and they thought, I know what we'll do. We'll, we'll create a charity, we'll call it Salve, and we'll tr create a company, we'll call that the Green Company. And the charity called Salve will own the Green Company, and the Green Company will employ the workers, and that way we don't have to go back to the council and tell them to retend this contract. And I didn't really know anything about it. And I, you know, and I was getting bits and bats of this and trying to wheel it out of officers and politicians and these consultants who were embedded in the contract for SOVA. My main concern was the terms and conditions and who's going to employ these guys. So eventually the contracts appeared, the recognition facilities agreement transferred, we, we got ACAS involved because there was a reduced budget and their idea was to close these sites and highlight the terms and conditions. And again, <coughs> long story short, we worked with this new mishmash system, or whatever it was. We improved their terms and conditions. We got their hours back. We resolved the dispute at the time. And things started to work. And I explained to our members, well, you're employed by, not a charity, by, by a company owned by a charity, not for profit. At least I'll be able to work with these guys. And it worked. Never met the charity trustees. They were just four people who were down London somewhere. But did meet the new management team. And they were okay. They'd all come from a voluntary sector background. They were, in fact, they were, they were really, really good. And they improved terms and conditions. We got the living wage. We started 
lobbying councils for money for people uh, with disabilities so we could get them employment ready. We set up something with the probation service. Well, I say we, our two GMB reps and the finance director who was running the show and the management team did it all. It was so good. We were putting this organisation forward for an award through the TUC, but this is how trade unions and, and non-for-profit organisations work in partnership to deliver public services. It was brilliant. Good terms and conditions, living wage, bonus scheme, guaranteed hours. These guys thought all their Christmas would come at once. We had to cap the bonus scheme, because at one point, even though the, 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 the amount of money that the council were paying these guys had reduced from one and a half million to a million, Six months into the second year, £58,000 in profit. They were gifting. They were making gifts to other charities. But we were using most of that profit, I have to say, to improve terms and conditions. We could work on welfare facilities which have been poor for years and years. Then, one year ago, in July, it all ended. Sharon Lowry, the finance director, walked into my office and said, Pete, I've been suspended. It's fantastic. They don't come in here telling me you've been suspended. This is the best thing we have. So I've been suspended. What I haven't told you is I've been having massive rows with the chair of the charity that owns us. The chair of the charity is instructing me to pay £5,000 a month to a printing company called Roughly Translated Limited, which she owns. And they've never so much as printed a leaflet. She says, it's, I think it's for consultancy fees. But what she does, I've no idea. I never see it. She's never here. She does nothing. Everything I've told you about was done by the management, the local management of Green Company and the union. Not only has she instructed me to pay £5,000, she also wants me to go to the council and demand another £25,000 for the marketing strategy, which has come up with. And that's going to pay for a different company that she also owns. So I've challenged it. We've started falling out. They've brought a new board member in. They've fallen out and they've suspended me. <clears throat> that's how it started. But once... It started, it didn't stop. Within days, they got rid of the suspended Sharon. They'd been to the operations manager and asked them to support them. Well, you, better do, you, you better come in line with us and support this. He didn't. He was gone. The HR manager went to work, wouldn't support this undermining of her manager. She came to work to find another person in there, a friend of the chair of the charity. That chair of the charity is now the director of Green Company. The entire senior management team sacked. We immediately went into dispute because our members quite rightly said, hold on a minute, if there's £5,000 a month to pay to this chair, plus 25 grand that the council could find, where's our premium rate for working on a weekend? We thought we were doing well getting the living wage. We want time and a half on a Saturday. Most of our lives spent at work on a weekend, they said. Quite rightly, I want a toilet to have a piss in, pardon my French, because on three of the sites there were no toilets with running water. We, we demand that now, so we immediately went into dispute. Premium rate. Welfare facilities, if you've got this sort of money, we want them. And bullying, if you've bullied the management team, you've sacked them all, they're part of our membership. It got worse, and it has got worse and worse. We went into dispute, they had intermittent strikes, they've sacked the reps. They've given every GMB member who walked out on those strikes a final written warning, including guys who've got learning difficulties, and there are a number of them down there, like extra employed, supported employment people. Some who are who have got quite severe mental health disabilities didn't matter. Final written warnings. We got them out on strike, really, through the council demanding that they didn't attack these guys because they were on a legitimate strike. They've taken on an army of zero-hour workers. It, the strikes have no impact. Lots of people, some people in this room have helped me on the picket lines. Those strikes have no impact. We've never closed one of them centres for one day. Why? because they've taken on an army of zero-hour contractors. They call them family and friends. But I've got it on tape, it's in my pocket. One of the guys taped the manager making a speech to everybody, saying, I have an army, an army of workers, ready to fill your slots the minute the GMB take you out that gate. And they have. So we've got an army of zero-hour contract workers. They've used free labour from the probation service, which we managed to get stopped. They've used free labour from Job Centre Plus, which we've managed to get stopped. And now, finally, before Christmas, we agreed to suspend the dispute whilst the council intervened. Well, do you know what? We're now heading into June. So how long it's going to take him to intervene, I don't know. But the reason I'm here today, first and foremost, is yes, to raise awareness about this dispute, but 
We no longer, as trade unions, we're going to we think that's bad. Wait till these Tories have finished. There will be no right to strike. Forget it. They'll pull out every stop. I, I've already explained to you how it's nigh on impossible now. So organisations like this, and Sheffield's Trades Council, and the TUC, are going to become very, they're already hugely important structures in our <coughs> society and in our movement, but they're going to become so much more important. We, we are going to have to put our differences aside and our political differences and our, you know, our, our views and our visions of the world aside because what we've got coming, what we've got coming is, uh, it, it's unbearable to think about, it's unbearable to imagine. But conduits like this and organisations like this this is how we're going to have to organise and this is how we're going to have to fight back. Because I'm having to come through the TUC, through the Tate Trades Council, through those supporting bodies to fight back and to have rallies on these sites. We had our first one on Sunday, very successful, some good speakers. I can announce here today we're having our next one in Chris's constituency, Louise Hague has agreed that it will be on the 7th, on the 18th, Saturday the 18th of July. We'll be having that. I'm hoping it's a victory celebration, not raising awareness. I'm hoping the council have done what the council have promised to do and continue to promise to do. February the 6th, they released a statement saying, we have no confidence in the Green Company. Well, we're now going into June. What have they done? Now, I'm hoping that it's <coughs> happening behind the scenes. We'll work on it. And just here to raise awareness. Thank you for all of that support that you've given us so far. And please watch out for the media and support that.